Well, there are a lot of Christians in Ukraine. We're talking about that today in light of what's happening in that country with the invasion of Russia. I'm Tim Wildman with Deb Tagliano and Abraham Hamilton III. Abe, uh, I mentioned to you right before this program, I said that you know, there are a lot of Christians in Ukraine and you were shaking your head. You, 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 do you know some or do you know, how, how do you know that? Yeah, well, I, I have some friends who are missionaries in Europe and, and some others who have been to Ukraine and around, those air, around uh, that area in general. And um, I also have a friend who was a former missionary in Russia itself. Um, so it, it is, there's a high percentage of Christians there and, and frankly my heart is heavy uh, for that nation too, and, for the, and for the world because this is going to have a, a reverberating impact on the world um, in, in addition to what's happening right it's now scary. with lo lives being lost at this uh, very moment in Ukraine. I mean, in, in, a, in the natural, as the Bible says, it, this is a scary moment for the world. And we're thinking in particular about our brothers and sisters who are trapped in a country that bombs are falling. Yes. Yeah, so we need to pray for them. Ed, uh, I heard from Ray Pritchard, our good friend in Kansas City, who's right. traveled to the Ukraine three times internationally. He's been in communication with the Bible uh, school that he teaches at. When he goes there, they train pastors. And he said basically people are, are, are fleeing to the western right. part of Ukraine. They're scared. They're worried. Obviously, these are these are families like us with children, and they have a normal life, and all of a sudden, boom, blaster going off around right. them. And uh, this isn't a third world country. So, you want to comment, kind of on the lines? Of well, what and and there there was a degree of unexpectedness from what from what I've been hearing from news reports in Ukraine. Not that uh, President Vladimir Putin of Russia didn't kind of tip his hand with 190,000 right. troops on the border. But a lot of people in, the, in, in Ukraine thought this won't really happen. Right, this is right. kind of gamesmanship and Putin's after certain concessions and everyone's going to work this out. But then the bombs start falling and uh, th now you're dealing with terror because, you know, we, people who have families, uh, some of us have children, right. grandchildren. Some of our, the mm. people watching uh, have parents and siblings. We don't experience that in this country in terms of uh, the kind of terror of war. Uh, you lose, you know, energy, power during the winter. Uh, you lose access to food, water, violence. You don't sometimes know where your family members are. This is a time for Christians to be prayerful about what's going on. It may be on the other side of the world, but this is the body of Christ. We're talking about Christians and the repercussions, as Abe said, I mean, there could be energy prices, expansion of hostilities. Uh, this yeah. is a time for Christians it's to pray. It's uncharted territory. We, we don't know what the next 24, 48, 72 hours brings right. with all this. Uh, we've seen world wars started by small incidences. This is no small incident, but uh, we will continue to pay attention for it. But the main thing I want to encourage you to do today is get on your knees as believers and pray for our fellow Christians in the Ukraine. I'm asking you to do that specifically now. We'll see you next time on Reason and Company. Mm -hmm.